So, okay, so let's see what's next. I'm starting to create a mess here, as you can tell. Okay. So, next they're starting to talk about these um, parts. I don't even know what these all are. What are they calling them? A mid-seat rail support is these. And these they're calling... I don't know. I don't, I don't see them called them out. Um, so, new parts. So they have the plastic on them. Um, these are parts that I'm going to be priming. They're parts that are inside the airplane, out of sight. So I definitely prime them. Again, uh, do what you want to do. There is no right or wrong when it comes to, to priming um, parts like these, which are outclad. Um, you don't have to prime them. There are plenty of airplanes out there that are not primed and, you know, are fine and not, not going to fall out of the sky. Um, I feel that it leaves a more sort of professional finish, the, the it looks better, um, I think it's worth the trouble. So you just peel off the, the plastic, and, oh, there's something I didn't do over here. I don't want to mix these parts up. This is this side, that's that side. So I'm just going to put a, an A on here. Um, and it goes on this side, so on this side, excuse me. Where the part's going to be covered, co you know, the part's going to go over here. So I'm just going to, right where the part's going to go, I'm just going to put an A. And it'll be covered when it's done, you know, covering my handiwork there. <laughs> Doesn't have to be covered, I just like it to, to disappear. So, all right, so let's just peel the rest of this. Part number is in here. So I'm gonna do something very similar. So these parts are gonna go together like this. So I'm gonna write the part number on the inside, which is the part that's not gonna be visible. So it's 004 Papa Lima. Why do you do it that way? Just so that if I have a huge pile of parts that I have put aside because I need to prime them or whatever, um, and it's been weeks since I've done this, it makes it so that I don't forget where this part goes later. But won't it just get covered with primer? Um, they might, uh, but when we prime them, if there's something important on the other side, I will usually, after we scuff them, um, I will rewrite what that is, right? Because for example, here, there's gonna be two sets of these. And because we're match drilling, we wanna make sure to put them back where they, you know, where we match drilled them or match reamed them in this case. Um, so I'm gonna say that, you know, this is gonna be 104 uh, PL and I'm gonna say, uh, call it A. And this one's going to be B, and this one's going to be C, and this one's going to be D, and I'm going to have that written on there so that they go back to the right spot. It's these parts are it's it's so close to the way they're done that it's usually not the end of the world if you end up riveting this on the other place. You'll notice that the rivets are going to be sort of tight, um, so that's not going to be great. But you know the, the airplane isn't going to fall out of the sky. Again, I'm just a little fastidious about this. The marker shows through the primer, right? The marker does show through the primer, yes. This can be a little tedious if you have to do a lot of this. All right, so this side is done. So 1004P-R and this was A, so this is going to be B. I put the B on the bottom because I know it's not part of the part number. And then we can peel the piece with the sticker on it. By the time you watch this video, if you're ordering a two kit, chances are you're not going to need to do the max drilling part. But I still have, unfortunately, some older parts. You know what? I'm going to do one of these so you can see it. Okay, so just looking at the diagram, the part goes... 
this way. I'm gonna spin it around. This thing is heavy. Don't drop it. There we go. All right. So it goes like this. You can see the the blow up. And if we look at where things line up, it's on the outside. See, there's three columns of rivets and the little dots are on the outside. So that is where it would go. So because I know I can't fit the Clico in that direction, I'm gonna come in from the other side. And put a Clico in here. You know what? I'm actually gonna do this in a different order because I'm working on the on the spar that's got a nice finish on it. These parts still need to be deburred. So I'm gonna go do that. Let me see what the best way to deburr this is gonna be. There's a little bit of, there's room. I'm gonna use the Vixen file for this. I'm gonna make a little bit of room here. The cool thing about the Vixen file is that it finds the high spots and files them down. And you can see as we go how the, the sheen of the metal is changing. There we go, this is almost done, this line. So if you look at this one, see how it's not very shiny and it's sort of bumpy and there's like obvious places I'm gonna cast my finger. Here, it's almost entirely shiny. There's a bump right there. Now, almost entirely shiny. So this surface is almost done. There's still a little bit of sharpness there. So I'm just gonna very lightly. There we go. Again, rule of thumb, not gonna cut myself. Same thing here. And this side is gonna be a little harder for me to get to because of just the shape of the part. Usually I wanna cut so that the, and of course I'm doing this very slowly to show you guys. Usually you wanna cut so that it's away from the part so that the piece comes off, but that feels really good. Um, it's not done. I'm gonna grab the grinder, the little angle grinder. Scotch-Brite wheel on here, that's the same as the big Scotch-Brite wheel on the big grinder. It's just a little one-inch wheel. And I'm just gonna just... Yeah, not gonna hurt myself on this. It is smooth. Um, and of course, I have to do the rest of the, the sides here. But for now, I just wanted to Show you. The other thing I'm doing here is I'm going to round off just a tiny little bit the 45 degree angles here. Okay. Just so they're not. Nice. Okay. Of course, before um, we finish this and prime it or whatever we're gonna do, we're gonna do the rest of them. But for right now, I just wanted to get this ready for me to click away in place and show you what the process is. Again, it's on the outside, okay? This is A. Yeah, 
depending on what you're doing, depending on what you're doing, I would do either one Coleco every other hole um, is one option. Definitely if, and I suspect this is gonna happen here soon, um, if we look on the other side, there are holes in the spar that went all the way through, but there are no holes over here. So I suspect, because I've done this once or twice before, that they're gonna want me to drill through the spar into this piece. So whenever I do that, I make sure that there's a Clico closest to where I'm gonna drill, as close as I can, which means I'm probably gonna end up putting one right here. All right, let's take a quick peek. Clico forming two mid-suit rail systems. Final drill number 30, all holes common between the mid-suit rail on both assemblies. Okay, so they want me to final drill these, these holes. I'm not gonna use a drill bit. I'm gonna use a reamer. And again, it's a number 30 because the reamer leaves a much nicer finish. And again, and I'm gonna go from this side because this is where I have access. I'm angling this, I wouldn't usually angle this, but just so you can see. Gonna just move the clicos. I'm gonna move them all down one, and that's going to expose the holes that I have not drilled yet, or not drilled yet, rather. I'm gonna keep my thumb up here just so that it holds in place. One, two, three. 